Uh, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here uh, this morning uh, to have the opportunity to share with you some information about my organization, um, the National Association for the Education of Young Children. Um, I first want to thank the organizing committee and Alexander and Nikolai, um, as well as the international committee. Um, I have been really impressed and really enjoyed uh, my last two days interacting and listening um, and learning uh, about all the amazing initiatives that are currently going on in Russia uh, to support young children. So, oh, left, sorry. <laughs> There we go. So um, it's important when I talk about NAUIC and who we are that we begin with our core values and beliefs. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization, um, non government, in the United States that is a professional membership association for early childhood professionals. Um, our membership is about 65,000 individuals um, who range from preschool teachers to faculty in teacher preparation institutions uh, to some policymakers or other professionals who devote their career to young children. Uh, so I don't know, maybe some of you are some of our members. We do have some international members. If so, I thank you. Um, we rely on our members to support our work and that we um, never want to forget that what are at the heart of what we do is to support early childhood professionals as a profession, to advocate on behalf of the important work that early childhood professionals do every day. Um, so you may, um, you know, some of these that I think are important that are themes that I've seen while I've been attending some sessions, um, I think the one I'll point out is reflection uh, and the important part of quality in, in early learning environments is to really support professionals and their ability to think about what their practice is and how to improve, but in a supportive and um, uh, supportive and helpful manner. So really thinking critically about your own practice and using research and policy to support that so that all uh, families and young children uh, can experience high quality early learning. So, we have several strategic priorities as an association. Uh, the first is that children birth through age eight have access, equitable access, to developmentally appropriate high quality early learning. Um, in the United States, we are struggling to still meet to meet this priority, but it is a priority of our association. Um, and you may know or have heard of us because of our accreditation of schools or programs for young children. And that is where that work would fit in this strategic priority. Uh, the next strategic priority uh, is the profession. So I've touched on that briefly, but we have an important initiative to define uh, early childhood educators in terms of their competencies and hopefully to advocate so that they get better pay and are um, recognized in society for the important work that they do. Uh, this is something that we, we struggle with in the United States um, and it, in fact many kindergarten teachers, you know, teachers of young children, may work more if they worked at McDonald's than if they worked in an early childhood program. Uh, and we know that's not okay, that uh, young children deserve to have um, teachers that are well paid, um, that have you know, a profession that has a code of ethics and standards and continuous professional development. Uh, so strategic priority of the profession is very important to us um, and something we're working on in the United States. 
Uh, the next priority, which leads me to then the primary reason I'm here, which is to talk about our global engagement efforts, is a strategic priority of leadership and innovation. And we believe as an organization that it's critical um, that we're cultivating leadership and in innovative strategies that propel the field of profession for high quality early learning. Part of that work is how do we engage globally? Um, we are, we were founded in 1926 um, as an organization and have traditionally been a U.S. membership association. We've welcomed international members and contri con contributors at our conferences and journals, but we've never proactively engaged internationally uh, until four years ago when I had the great honor of, of taking on um, that task for the association. Um, and so today I'm going to talk to you about what that means um, and give you an example of some of our projects. So, uh, rem keeping in mind that our vision is that all young children are able to thrive and learn in a society dedicated to ensuring that they reach their full potential. Um, we keep that in mind with all of our work. Um, it's also important to discuss our guiding principles for how we approach this work, which you will see are in line with the circles I started with about our core values and beliefs. Um, that we know that the best way children learn, and we heard about yesterday um, in terms of the importance of culture and learning and context, um, that we really can't approach our work as a copy-paste, yeah? Um, even if it was the perfect system, um, or perfect standards, which I don't think there are, <laughs> um, you would never want to approach it when working abroad or even in the United States as a copy-paste. That the importance of collaboration and working and understanding with the people who will be implementing standards or approaches to learning is absolutely crucial to having an authentic um, system or authentic way of learning and supporting teachers. Uh, so we must be sensitive to the nuances of varying contexts um, as we collaborate with our international partners um, and to ensure that we're being culturally appropriate. Um, and that we also have to maintain the integrity of NAYC's core values and beliefs. So while we recognize uh, you know, varying contexts, and we do that in a way that is uh, consistent with what we know is best for young children in terms of uh, supporting their learning and development and also respecting their families and their values and beliefs. There are really two parts to my work, our work internationally, um, if you think of them as buckets. <laughs> um, technical assistance is the first, and I'm going to give you some examples of that shortly about how we work with other governments around standards development and um, some systems work. Uh, this, the other bucket is that we are really working with our resources and in terms of our publications or our conferences and that we are adapting them in a way that's culturally appropriate and relevant. Um, in part, this could just be about language um, and the importance of translation agreements and ensuring that our professional materials, when translated, are maintaining the uh, core of what we were trying to communicate in English, but also making sure that they are available in other languages. I'm sorry to say, at this point, we do not have very many, I don't think we have anything officially in Russian, although I hope that that will change um, in the near future. Uh, 
So, um, to think about um, our work with systems, we get many, many requests from governments all over the world about our standards. Um, and we have some a framework for how we approach that work. Um, as I mentioned, we don't believe in a copy-paste approach. We also don't believe that we will create offices all over the world and replicate ourselves. Our goal is to support or work with organizations and have capacity building. Um, so where we may have technical expertise, um, that we are sharing that with other professionals and colleagues and really building, um, you know, giving, passing on knowledge while also learning, um, but then not staying and running it. That really this is about exchange. Um, that we are thinking about early learning systems um, in terms of all of the supports that are needed uh, to have high quality early learning. Some of those are structural, as we learned about yesterday, and involve the government, which I was um, so pleased and um, heartened to see how many government officials are participating in this event. Um, they play a critical role in how we approach quality and support um, early learning for young children. Um, and we are doing a lot of standards development uh, with countries. Um, in part, what they ask us to do, because we have our own sets of standards, is to say, are the standards that we have created as a country, do they align with what you and AYC thinks is best practice? So we do a lot of talking and discussing and thinking about, yes, this is the core intent. How does the example differ? by context. So this is really the description of our technical assistance work. Um, we truly believe that by proactively engaging with early childhood professionals like yourself, um, that we learn more <laughs> um, than we give. And by learning, we are able to improve the materials that we continue to create, the conversations um, that we uh, start with early childhood professionals within the United States, and that we're really deepening our knowledge and broadening our perspective. Um, so it's truly a, a gift to be able to be here with you and learn and share. Um, so, before I give you an example of some of our technical assistance work, this is a little bit of a glimpse into our core business lines. Um, you can see that we have a journal, Young Children, that's a peer-reviewed journal, um, it's, it's only in English, um, but that is uh, one of the products that we have as an association. Below that, you'll see we have something called Teaching Young Children. This is a magazine specific to teachers that has very practical activities um, and supports teachers in their practice in the classroom. Um, you can see that one is actually in Mandarin. <laughs> we do have that in Mandarin at this point. Um, and we have some materials in Spanish, but we're also very interested in having conversations about what would make sense to have in, in other countries. Um, we've just launched uh, a new platform for members to engage, uh, which is our Hello platform. It's only in English at this point, but it's an excellent way where we really bring early childhood uh, professionals together to exchange and ask each other ideas and learn. Um, I think one of the most important roles we play as an association is to bring differing ideas and views together as a field from experts and come to consensus on some key um, ideas that help guide the field. We also have um, two big events where we have conferences, and I would love to welcome you all to Atlanta in November for our annual conference, um, and where I have the pleasure of meeting <laughs> and, and getting to know Alexander. So um, that's a little bit about our global um, enhancing our domestic work for global audiences. Standards. So um, when I talk about standards, 
I talk about there are three types of standards that we really refer to in early childhood. The first being early learning standards, or what young children should know and be able to do. We do not have early learning standards. However, we have a position statement or a white paper on how communities could go about creating relevant early learning standards. Um, people rely on us for that statement and we support their development. The other set of standards that we do have are program standards. When I talk about program standards, I'm talking about standards of quality for kindergartens. That's what we're probably most well known for. Um, and thirdly, professional preparation standards. Those are standards for institutes of higher education about teacher preparation. And they align with program standards. As I talk about systems, we know that in order to have high quality, you need all of this, and it needs to be relevant and adequately funded. Um, so there's a little bit of background on what I mean when I talk about standards. Because one of our biggest projects, um, which is for the international work, is with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where the Ministry of Education asked us to support their development of early learning standards. Um, and you can imagine the context is very different uh, than the United States. So it was an exciting project that required us to really think critically about what are our core values, how can that look different in a society that has very different priorities. And I'll give you some examples in a minute. Another project that we're working on is with uh, an impact investment fund who is supporting the Dominican Republic in their overhaul of their higher education teacher preparation system. So they are using the higher education standards to align and identify gaps or points of intersection um, with their standards. So before I show you some examples, I wanted to talk, I have said the word developmentally appropriate practice a couple of times. And uh, when I say developmentally appropriate practice, I am referring to our, our book that is really founded in the long history, I would say, from Russia, which um, Vygotsky um, is referenced throughout it um, and has been a really important part of the theory that has guided my work and guides our everyday work. Um, so it's about how young children learn. Um, and I would say that one of the most important ways they learn was this in the cultural context of which they are. So I um, actually, I've been spending a lot of time in China the last year and uh, had the opportunity or to use chopsticks many, many times. <laughs> Something that I did in Washington, you know, I go to a Chinese restaurant, I would use chopsticks. It is very different when you are hearing the sounds of Mandarin and you're sitting at a table with a group of professionals um, and using them in context. And that ability to really understand the importance of culture and context really became true for me even as an adult, but is the way that we would approach this work. So for example, um, you know, the result is the same, whether you're using forks or chopsticks, right? The point is you need to eat. So if you think of standards as this guide for what ultimately you would like an outcome to be, there are many different ways to get to that outcome. And that's why I love this work and what makes it interesting, but is also what makes it complicated <laughs> because there's not one way to do it. Um, and that's why we are so reliant on our international partners when we're working on projects like standards. So before I quit, because um, I think I'm coming up to time, I wanted to give you a couple of, of real life examples um, from Saudi Arabia. Um, where we worked with a group of 25 women um, who were uh, leaders in the Ministry of Education throughout the kingdom, it's a very big country, uh, to develop 
their leadership skills and become experts on what is happening in early learning standards and to facilitate their development. Um, so you can see a couple of the pieces that are uh, part of that work because we think it's so important to have a sense of the context and who we're working with, um, et cetera. What we came, what we ended up with, which I think you'll find interesting. Um, so here's an example um, of, of what the standards are. So as I said before, we are really, um, we stay, stick to our own values, but we also have to recognize those uh, in the countries we're working with. And we know that with early learning standards, um, we would say, and I, Lynn Kagan, you may be familiar with, would say that I think there are about 60% of what you're looking at for young children would be consistent across cultures. So their fine motor development, there are some variations, but generally speaking, development is consistent. The other part is really contextual. And you can see that we had um, in Saudi Arabia, uh, Islam is a pivotal part of that society. And so we have a standard in early learning standards on Islamic education. And when I initially tell people this, that we're talking about how does that look for four-year-olds, people look a little shocked and a little scared because <laughs> they think I'm talking about theory or, um, you know, is this really an appropriate topic? How does that look? And so I have a couple of examples. And you can see that in the context of Saudi Arabia and Islam, respect for parents um, is very critical. And that indicator for them fit into Islamic education. Um, there is also a hand washing criteria um, or indicator that fits for them. So it was really a fascinating um, fascinating project to learn and understand how this appropriately fits. So um, that's just a glimpse into the work. I am going to show you my website, maybe, maybe not. Um, I actually, it's just www.naeyc.org, and uh, we have a number of um, things available on the website and my email. You're welcome to contact me. So, uh, spasiba.